Welcome to CHE 205. In this video, I'll be talking about a VBA program that calculates the average standard deviation, largest and smallest number in a list. So we're going to use the array as we talked about before in one of the videos in chapter two. So this is um, this is a VBA program, particularly related to exercise 2.4 of the textbook. So as before, we declare our variables. We have um, we have a number. We have a list that we're going to put the numbers in. We have the number of numbers, sum, average, sum of a squared, which is used to calculate the standard deviation, a standard deviation and then largest, smallest, and then the current row, which is called ACK row. Depending on the type of variables, most of them are doubled, except the number of rows, which is integer. Okay. So we activate the sheet. We set the cursor at row 2, which is this cell right here. And um, the list we're going to generate first is we're going to use um, a function in Excel, which is called RAND between. And we're going to generate a list of numbers between 1 and 100 in random. So what I do is here I just type equals and then ran between 1 comma 100. As you hit enter, it's going to create a number between 1 and 100. Then what you do is you drag this thing all the way down to however many numbers you want, like, you know, 5, 10, whatever, just let it go then. And then this is going to generate a list of random numbers. Now every time you click on you just uh, if every time you drag this cell down it's going to cre create a different list of random numbers okay so then what you do is you let's say copy you know like two of them depending on how many numbers you want to get the average of um like in this case let me clear this up i want to uh calculate the average standard deviation smallest largest of these numbers so i'm going to copy these so right click on my mouse and then copy. Then I go to here, starting from row three, I do right click, paste special, and then just the values. So I'm gonna just paste the values, nothing else. No formulas, nothing, just the values. Okay, and then how many numbers are these? Uh, there are two ways to do that. Either you can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or you just come over here at the bottom of your Excel sheet. You click on this area which says sum, and then you click on count numbers. That tells you count number seven. So you don't even need to count them, just highlight them, and this area right here tells you how many numbers you have. Okay, seven. I'm going to put seven in row one. So that means the very first time that VBA comes to this spreadsheet and start reading a number, it implies that there will be seven numbers starting from row three down, right? So this seven means there are seven numbers which will be read from this list. Anyways, so when you put when you put act row equal to, we indirectly telling VBA that you're going to read the number of numbers from that cell. Okay, so anyways, we set the number to sum, we set the sum to zero. Initially, there is no number in the list. And we're going to read the first number. Uh, I actually take it back. So we're going to read the number of numbers from row two. So again, active sheet, cell row two, column one, that goes to number of numbers. Now we're going to increase acro by one. So now this is going to be acro, row three. And then we're going to start reading numbers from one to the number of numbers we just read from the row above, right? So we're going to read the numbers, we're going to store them in this array, and by the end of this loop, we have all the numbers in the array, in the input numbers array, in this array, right? Okay, so now uh, what we're going to do is now we're going to calculate the average and the sum and everything else. So if the number of numbers bigger than zero, we're going to call a function called summer, and this summer calculates the average for us. So let's go to summer uh, summer function. It takes the number of numbers and takes the numbers themselves. 
and then it spits out the average. So we're going to introduce two variables here, i and sum. We don't need to introduce these because these are arguments and they inherit the type from the variables in the call statement up there in the main function. Okay, so we set the sum to zero. We go over all the numbers now. Our numbers now have name nums. So we're going to go over every entry of this nums. We calculate the sum, we divide by n, we get the average, and then we're going to return average back to the main function. So by this line, I have the average, and I print it out. And I print out the average equals, and then the result would go to um, the act row. So remember, act row now, by the time you finish reading the numbers, the act row would be one below the last number. We're going to add one more here. So the result will be printed two rows down below the last number. Okay. So I'm going to print the average and then the result will go to column two. The text goes to column one. The result goes to column two. Now by the time, by this line, we have the average. Now we're going to calculate the sum. Uh, we're going to, um, no, I'm sorry. We're going to calculate the, the smallest and largest. And to do that, as well as this, the sum squared. So sum squared is easy. And we go over all the numbers again from one to num numbers. And every time we read one number, we, we subtract the average which calculated here from the number and we square it when we keep the sum. So this is a cumulative sum of the average uh, subtracted from every element. So this is actually to calculate standard deviation, if you recall. So standard deviation is calculated this way. You get every entry of the uh, of the number list, subtract average from it, square it, get the sum of squares, and then divide by n minus one, then you go square root of that. Okay, so that gives you standard deviation, and we're going to exactly follow that. So this is exactly the line I just showed you. And so every time we read a number, we can we can also calculate the largest. So initially we set the largest to zero, and if any number we read is bigger than the largest. We're going to replace the largest by the current number we read. So that means if the number is smaller than the largest, we don't change the largest. And if it's bigger than the largest, we're going to update the largest. So this is about finding the largest. We do the same thing with the smallest. Initially, we put, uh, initially we put zero. And then if the absolute value, by the way, this is absolute value. If the absolute value is less than smallest, that means uh, yeah so here it's a bit tricky and the tricky thing is um, we initially set largest to zero but then we initially set smallest to something very large so that means any number we're going to put in this list should be smaller than this in that case the absolute value of the first number, uh, the absolute value of the first number is definitely less than the, the smallest number we have here, which is 10 to the 20, right? So we're going to replace smallest by the first number. And then now if the second number is smaller than the smallest, we just update it. Then we're going to again update it. Otherwise, we just keep the smallest. So this loop uh, updates the smallest, okay? Now, when the loop over the number is finished, we have the smallest and largest, and we have the sum of squares. So for standard deviation, we have to divide sum of squared by number of numbers minus one. That's exactly here. So sum of the squares divided by n minus one, and then we get the square root of the total. So that is the square root of it. I think there's a t missing here. No right. Okay, so now we have the standard deviation. We increase act by one more, and then we're going to print out standard deviation in column one, and in column two will be the values, column one will be the text. We add one to the current row, we type the largest, and uh, text in column one, values in column two. And then add one more row to print out the smallest as a text in column one, and then the values in, the, in color two. I think that's the end of the code. 
Now this is when the number of numbers is bigger than zero. If the number of numbers is smaller than zero or zero, that means we didn't put any number in the spreadsheet. And in that case, the VBA prints out no input numbers to, to process. Okay, so let's give it a shot. I'm gonna run it with these seven random numbers that I generated. So I'm gonna click on that, go to run, reset, and then run, and then run. Uh, so I got an error that's sub or function not defined. So my bad, this is not a skew RT, it's just a skew R. So I was right initially. Okay, so let's reset again and then run. There you go. So we've got the average, standard deviation, largest and smallest, and everything works well. So now you have a VBA code which calculates the average, standard deviation, largest and the smallest. By the way, you need to copy the random numbers and paste as a value on this column. If you don't do that, every time you run the code, these random numbers will change. I'll show you in a minute. Look at that. The first one is 89. I'm going to run my code one more time. And you see this number has changed. Although my list actually hasn't changed, but these numbers have changed. So unfortunately, that's about the random generator in Excel. Every time you activate the sheet, it, the, the random numbers that we generate here changes but not these ones because these are the values of the original random numbers that we generated so th these are just values these are you see these are related to the functions and that's why they change but these ones are just bare numbers and they won't change okay so hope this is useful thanks all for watching stay tuned for the next video on another exercise in VB programming.